Lesson 2. Purification. This lesson is dedicated to one of the main ingredients of 1G networks, purification. So, let's start with step 1 on detecting X and Z errors. Now we're going to uh, do a quick review of the purification protocol for 1G repeaters. We have discussed this scheme uh, already in our module on overview of quantum communication in lesson 12, step 4. And it goes as follows. A node A and node B distribute two pairs of a Bell pair. Then they apply a control knot operations on the qubits that they uh, possess and measure the second pair in the Z basis. Then they exchange the uh, classical outcomes of this measurement between each other and they decide whether to keep a pair one or not. For example, if our input is the ideal phi plus and phi plus for both pairs, then prior to measurement, uh, the state is given by the following, phi plus, phi plus. It's unchanged. But what happens if the input itself is affected by errors? And to do that, we will consider um, a bit flip channel. So the two possibilities for the input is that the input is unaffected, uh, by the bit flip channel, given by this term over here, phi plus, or it flips into a psi plus state. This f in front of our uh, ideal phi plus term is the input fidelity. So with fidelity f, we have the ideal state, and 1 minus f, we've got the error affected state. And the protocol goes as follows. We distribute two copies of this noisy state, uh, two qubits are in possession of uh, node A and two qubits are in possession of node B. We apply the C, uh, C not gates where the controls are the pair 1 qubits and the targets are the pair 2 qubits. And then we measure in the Z basis. And if the measurements are correlated, meaning the parity is even, we keep uh, the pair 1 state. Or uh, in the other case, if the parity is uh, odd, meaning that the measurement outcomes are anti-correlated, then we discard the first pair. So, how is the resulting state affected? So these are the four possibilities. The first possibility is that the, our input state is unaffected by the error. And this happens with probability f squared. When we measure the second pair in the z basis, uh, we get correlated outcomes, meaning that the parity is even. So we keep pair 1. With probability f times 1 minus f, we get the following input, that the first pair is unaffected by noise, but the second pair is affected by noise. Again, the C0 gates do not change the state, but this time when we measure the second pair in the Z basis, we get anti-correlated outcomes, so we discard the first pair. The third possibility is that the pair 1 is affected by the X noise, but the pair 2 isn't. In this case, we get the following output prior to the uh, measurements. And when we measure the second pair, we are told to discard because again, this pair 2 is, this in, is in psi plus state, so the parity is odd. Final possibility is that both states are affected by the noise. But this time notice that the second pair has changed after the application of C0 state into a, psi, uh, into a phi plus state, meaning that it will pass the parity check and uh, we will keep the uh, first pair. This happens with probability 1 minus the whole thing squared. So, after we keep, uh, uh, keep the first pair, what's the state of this, um, this post-purification uh, state? And it's given by the following density matrix rho prime. It has the same form as before, but now these coefficients have changed in front of these terms. And f prime is related to our initial uh, fidelity in the following way, by this nonlinear function. So let's spend a little bit of time uh, thinking um, what this means. Here we are plotting f prime as a function of the input fidelity. And to compare it better with the input fidelity, we're also going to plot f as a, a straight line over here. So let's say that our input fidelity is very low. It's 0.2. What happens, the output fidelity of the state that we're instructed to keep actually decreases. It goes below 0 
And if you look better at the graph, you can see that this is true for any input fidelity in this region, between 0, 0.0 and 0, 0.5. On the other hand, if your input fidelity is um, higher, for example, 0, 0.8, then we see that the fidelity of the output state is actually boosted. We get closer to our ideal state phi plus. And again, this is true for any uh, state in the region of input fidelity 0 0.5 and 1.0. So in order for this purification scheme to detect errors and give us a state of a higher fidelity, we must ensure that the base pairs have fidelity higher than 0 0.5. So that takes care of uh, X errors. Now let's see how Z errors are detected by this um, scheme. Again, scheme is the same. We have the following circuits. We apply the C nodes, and then we measure in the Z basis. But this time, our inputs are either phi plus or phi minus. And here are the four possibilities. Notice that if both, again, if both uh, inputs are unaffect unaffected by noise, nothing happens. But if uh, only the second pair is affected by noise, then the, then the error actually propagates through the C node gates onto the first pair. The first pair also becomes phi minus. And what's even worse, if you look at the state of all, all pair uh, uh, of the pair two, in all these four possibilities, the parity of the state in the Z basis is even meaning that um, we are always instructed to keep pair one. So this scheme completely uh, does not detect uh, Z errors at all. So what will we do? We have to change our scheme a little bit. We have to introduce a new circuit that can detect Z errors. And the circuit luckily is very similar to uh, detecting X errors. The only thing that has changed is that we have flipped the control and the targets for this C not gates. So now it's the second pair that acts as our control, and the first pair is the target. And instead of performing measurements in the Z basis, we perform them in the X basis. So let's get back to our four possibilities. And in this case, we can easily check that uh, if the pair 2 is in the state phi plus, this has, odd, uh, this has even parity in the X basis. But if the state is in phi minus and it's affected by an error, then this gives us odd parity in the X basis measurement. Meaning that again, half of the time we discard and the other half we keep. 